Hello and welcome back. Welcome to another video here at Pragmatic Works. My name is Mitchell Pearson and in this video we're going to be taking a look at how can you give your users the ability to change what measures they see in a single visualization. This is awesome. This is an incredible feature and we're going to take a look at it in just a second. So stay tuned. All right, so here's the scenario. I have a customer that I'm working with and this customer has about six core measures that they want to be able to put into their report. And on top of those measures, they have some things like prior year, they have some time intelligence. So those six measures kind of get magnified and they get multiplied kind of like what you see in this basic little report that I've built over here to the left. And so here's the situation. Here's the problem that a lot of companies are struggling with on a daily basis. And that problem is this. How do I build reports that are simple, that are elegant, that show my end users what they need to know without overwhelming them with too much? Because one of the things about Power BI is all the interactivity, all the filtering, all the slicing and the drilling through to other pages and bookmarks, end users get lost. And it's a lot to take in, right? So as a developer, you're watching this video and you're like, oh, what you're showing me here, I could just do this by creating six different visuals or I could build a bunch of report page tool tips and drill throughs, et cetera. But a lot of customers are having this problem where they really need the adoption to take off and people are getting overwhelmed with their reports. And so one of the things I stress all the time when it comes to Power BI, very simple, very clear, is try to get as much analytical value as you can out of a single report page, making it as easy as possible on the end user. So even things like drill downs, which I love, they're great. A lot of customers that I work with, even people that have been working with Power BI for a while, they struggle with this, the drill downs, right? So here's the thing. Most people are very familiar with slicers. Slicers were in Excel, they've been in Excel forever. They're visual filters. So I have this customer, they have these six base measures and then they got the prior year measures and the prior month measures, they got all these measures. And it doesn't make sense to put them all in a single report like we have here, right? So I have this report here and in this single report, I have four different, I have what, six different measures right now. I have profit, profit prior year, cost, cost prior year, total sales, total sales prior year. And when you put all of these into the same visual, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. It's hard to read, it's not intuitive. The alternative to that would have been what? To say, all right, I'm gonna put in this visual, I'm just going to put profit and profit prior year. That would make a lot more sense. It's easier to understand. But then if I wanted to see total cost and total cost prior year and total sales, total sales prior year, I either create a new page for every one, right? Or I have to, build six of this exact same chart on this report, which takes up the entirety of the whole report, and I really can't put anything else on it, which is going to cause me more navigation, right? More navigation for my end users, which I would like to try to avoid. I wanna keep it simple and to the point. So what we have is this ability in Power BI where I can create a slicer, and in that slicer, I can tell my end users that they can choose whatever measure they want to see. So if you wanna see cost and prior year in this visual, you just choose those two. If you wanna see cost and sales side by side, you just choose those two. And I think this is just incredible feature functionality that exists. Now, there was a way that we would make this work prior to this idea and this concept of filled parameters, um, but it was a hack and it was a way that we would kind of figure it out like by adding a lot of extra code into our measures. But now Microsoft has made a late. So let's jump right in and keep this video short and just show you exactly how to do it. First and foremost, we're gonna be using something called filled parameters. Now at the time of this video, right now, filled parameters are actually in preview. So you, what you can do is if you don't see this option, you're going to want to go back over to the file up here at the top, click on file, go into options and settings, go into settings, go to preview features, and turn this capability on. So this is on. Now for me, I don't remember ever turning it on. So I think it might get turned on automatically, as a preview feature, but just be aware that it is that. And so I'm gonna go over to the modeling ribbon right here. And on the modeling ribbon, I'm going to tell it that I want to create a new parameter. And I'm going to choose fields, okay? I'm gonna choose fields. 
Now, when we go through this process, this is gonna build an entirely new table as you're going to see in just a moment, but I'm going to go ahead and choose fields and it's going to open up this box. And what I'm going to do in this box is I'm going to choose all of the measures that I'm going to allow to appear in the slicer, which will dynamically affect the visualization here, the clustered column chart that I'm using, the line chart, whatever it is. So this is really, really cool. Uh, I do need to give it a name. So I'll go ahead and call this something like base measures um, plus prior year, something to that effect, because you could obviously create multiple of these. And then in my measures, I'm gonna go ahead and select the ones that I want. Now, it is somewhat important to go ahead and choose them in the order that you want them to appear in the slicer. You can change this later. You can go into the DAX code and change the ordinal position of the different measures that you've chosen, but we're gonna choose our measures here. And I'm gonna start with sales and then total sales prior year. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab cost and cost prior year and then profit and profit prior year. And you could grab more, you see how easy it is, right? Click, 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 click. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to go ahead and add a slicer to this page as well. That's perfect. You don't need to, obviously you can come click slicer and then pull in the column once it's done, but this kind of saves me a step. So I'm gonna add slicer to page and then I'm going to click create. So it's going to go ahead and add a little slicer all the way over here. So let me grab the slicer and move it over. And you're going to notice that the slicer has total sales, prior year, et cetera. Now, if I click on that, it's not doing anything yet, right? So that's a little bit bizarre. So Mitchell, what's going on? Why is it, why is it not working? I thought it was gonna affect this chart. Well, actually what I need to do is I'm going to remove my measures from here. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna remove profit and profit prior year, all of these measures from the chart. And then I'm gonna go down to this new parameter table that was created. And let me make sure I'm not in the way here. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab this column that has a list of all of the measures and I'm gonna put that into the Y axis on this report. So I'm gonna drop it right there, okay? And that's tied to those measures. So I'm gonna put it right there in the Y axis and look at that, it's working, right? It is literally showing me right now total sales versus prior year and I love this capability. So if I uncheck this um, and I grab a cost and cost prior year, now I'm looking at cost and then the prior year cost, right? If I uncheck those and I grab profit and then profit prior year, I'm now looking at those. And so what we're able to do, and again, this is incredible functionality, is you're able to go in here and build a slicer that effectively, and can I, I don't think it'll let me just quickly format in this way. Oh, it did, okay, nice. So I'm gonna turn this into a measure like this. I couldn't remember if that was one of the formatting options that worked, but it was like so. I'm gonna drop this also right on top like this. I like things to align a little bit. There we go, same thing here. And so now what we have is we have this ability to come in here and grab multiple measures that we can put in one chart, one chart instead of having a lot of charts. And I think this is awesome. I think this is incredible because you get so much capability. You tie this in with things like report page tool tips. You tie this in with, um, you know, just some basic things and keep a lot of analytical value on a single page here. Instead of having six different charts, I think you got a home run. I think that's great. I think that's a win. And, you know, I haven't really, I hadn't really played with this a whole lot since it came out. I knew it was there. I knew it was cool. I had done it in different ways in the past, but like I said, my customer, my client I was working with, they needed something like this. And I was like, you know what, let's use field parameters. And it literally within five minutes, we were able to put this together just like we did on this call. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you did, like always, hit that like and subscribe button. We would appreciate it here at Pragmatic Works, and we'll see you in the next video.